Hey guys, welcome to another out of spec detailing video. It's Kyle behind the camera and I'm joined by Brandon from Tesla Flex. And uh, dude, it's one o'clock in the morning. We're in the middle of Amsterdam and we have a Model 3 Highland. So in this video, I thought it would be kind of interesting as Colton normally does to sort of evaluate the fit and finish, the body panel gaps, the interior trim pieces, the interior trim selection, some design elements on the brand new Tesla Model 3 Highland. And uh, we've done this for many EVs. We've done this for every Tesla that's come out. And it's something that Colton repeatedly does. Now, this is the first time I think we've ever done this type of video. And I'm definitely gonna let Colton down in this because I don't have my paint meter depth gauge or anything. This is the first time we've ever done a build quality analysis on a Tesla that has a VIN that starts with an L. Brandon, can you explain what the heck that means and where this car came from? I'm assuming it means it came from Shanghai. Yep. And you know, that's, that's where all the Model 3s right now are coming from for all of Europe. So, yeah. Yeah, so this one's a Shanghai Model 3. And you would know as well, some of the boats, I mean, is this on the first shipment? Is this the first batch? It was first or second. Okay. Zero. So this is a really early Model 3 Highland. Um, the VIN looks really high, but I think they've just continued from where they left off. Uh, dang. So what's the spec on this one, Brandon? It's a standard range with white paint and black interior, 18-inch mm -hmm. wheels. So 18s, LFP battery pack, means you can full charge it, do whatever you want to the battery pack. And uh, I have to say, just initially, the design seems so much more advanced or future-y than the previous Model 3. In my impression, just spending time with this car already, the old one, which you can see just here, already looks old. There's almost no way around it. So, you know, just going back in time, Model 3 launched in 2017. It had some an Alcantara headliner and a few different things back then. And honestly, my impression of early Model 3 was they were pretty solid cars. They were built really well. But then that era of 28, late 2018, early 2019 came. They kind of went downhill a little bit and the build quality seemed to have been picking up recently, especially with Model Y coming on really nicely. You just picked up a new Model Y. How would you say that was put together? Probably one of the best built tests that I bought. I would agree. I think there was like that, I don't know, late teens, very early 20s that gave Tesla a bad name for build quality, especially. And man, did they turn it around. So what I'm curious about is, did they really dial in this new car for Shanghai? And will it continue to stay high? Of course, this is something we should keep an eye on. But just in terms of design, of course, the exterior, some minor changes here. We've already noticed some of the panels being identical between the two cars. It's nice that just a random person parked their Model 3 here at the hotel. But inside, this is where a lot of changes are. And if you guys are curious, we've already done a full sort of first look at this car. So this is going to be more on the materials. And I'll leave a link in the description to the first look of Model 3 that I had. And I'll actually be doing a driving review of this car tomorrow. And take a look at Tesla Flex on TikTok because you'll have, I don't know, hundreds of videos. videos, of videos. Yeah, just an unbelievable amount of videos on this stuff. But I say we start up front. Maybe you can pop the front trunk for us. And let's take a look at how this all looks. Before you do that, also, I just wanted to point out the body gaps along the front hood. Really nice. The, the worst of it being right here, this little area. Maybe not as great as this side, but I'm talking very minor. You can't really tell from above, but there's just a slight gap. All right, pop her open. Okay, a little seems like a little double latch situation going on there. Tesla badge glued on. Wow, the struts are strong on this it's one. Like, this honestly like the Model Y. When I got the Model Y and I like did that, it just swings up. Yeah. That, that was pretty smooth at the end. Yeah, it kind of comes the to a nice slowdown. Right oh, really? Okay. But I've, I think that feels so different than my 2019 Model 3. Than my 2023. Yeah, very cool. This all looks pretty normal to me. I would say uh, they got rid of the coat hooks or whatever they were the bag holders years ago yeah. so that's nothing new but what is new is they've relocated the washer fluid here and i'm not sure why what do you say we lift up on this can we should be able to pop up yeah yeah <laughs> yeah we'll just start start lifting up on stuff there you go hell yeah 
Okay, so what's going on here? We have the top of the strut with that new um, uh, reactive damper right over here. We have the uh, 12 volt lithium ion battery pack, brake fluid, of course, your fireman cut loop, your air intake. I don't know, do the top of these struts look different to you, Brandon? Well, yeah, because this is exactly where the wiper fluid used to go, like where the little filling part was. That so, was my understanding. I guess maybe they, I mean, they've really improved the suspension on it, so they just had to make space. And right here kind of makes sense. There wasn't much going on ever since they got rid of radar and the sensor. Yeah, or was the wiper different. fluid here? Uh, no, it was like right about here. Okay, wow. You so know, like bend over, if the strut is where the wiper fluid used to be, that's crazy. Before we post this video, I'm going to double check and confirm with Drew, who can check his car back in Colorado and see because that would be a wild change yeah. to have the, there. It also seems a little bit wider. Like yeah, right I here. agree. It comes all the way to the end yeah, now. So I guess maybe it was like more right here. Yeah, I don't know. And then this I think is a Euro only pedestrian crash situation. They pop up yeah, to absolutely. raise the hood. Yeah. You can't use power front. Right, they can't use power front, that's right. So um, under the hood though, you know, everything looks nice and tight. I have to say, just as a general overview of the build quality on this car, really good, wouldn't you say? This is one of the best built Tesla I've seen. That's for sure. Like 15 or so I've driven. Absolutely. And then the hood closing, how does that feel to you? I noticed this earlier, you feel like you put a lot more force coming down the close like that. Hmm. I'm just used to using one hand. Yeah, sure. And maybe that's something that gets broken in over time yeah. with the seals being brand new. Not sure. The design looks great. Loving the front bumper. No ultrasonic sensors, I think is maybe the wrong move for like a user standpoint right now, but it looks great without the circles and the yeah. bumpers. Really, really like this one. Um, cameras look like they're on there pretty tight. No issues. Everything's super, super tight on this particular one. And then really all of these little lines. This is really, again, the worst that I'm seeing on the whole car. Just this little inconsistency in where the panel gaps match up. We're talking about a half a millimeter maybe of height difference. Very, very minor, something I would not mind at all. You can take a look at the body shut lines here, completely dead straight on this. The doors are aligned perfectly and maybe we should make it clear. This is a customer delivered car. This is not like a press car or a prepped car. Today, like brand new. Yeah, some friends of ours from Sexy Buttons or ENH Auto. Do you know actually which it is? I call it just, I call it Enhance Auto. Enhance Auto? Like, I okay. Buttons yeah, sure. So Enhance Auto, uh, they, uh, they make some Tesla accessories. We'll show those on the inside. Super cool stuff. They were just like, hey, we're in the Netherlands. Come check out the car. So you flew here. I drove two days to get here. <laughs> we're like, yes, we're going to do this thing. And what's funny is we, of course, are neighbors. So always, always really fun. Um, yeah, all of these lines lining up perfectly. This has always been a really hard part for Model 3. Yeah. And that was, did they have the trunk lifters on both sides on old Model 3? No, it was only on the left or the right side. Okay, so the trunk's always got a little bit cockeyed. Yeah, that's why it's always a mess up on this side or the other side because it just has too much pressure. Makes sense. But now they have dual lifters on this thing. And you can see electric connectors going to both sides of the struts here. I wouldn't be surprised if these are from the Model Y. Oh, interesting. Could be, yeah. Like there's a lot of the same parts. Like, this is definitely, like... Kind of the same as a Model S or Model Y. This material did back here. Yeah, yeah, this is literally just a Model S. Yeah, so that was, I think that's kind of not a good feeling material. What's your impression? I mean, compared to what? <laughs> yeah, compared to the plastic, this is yeah, nicer. Compared to plastic is better, but yeah, I mean, and they did, the carpet does feel a little bit nicer. It, it, yeah, this it feels good. It's like a, a thinner, kind of more rigid kind. Yeah, this definitely has a little bit of padding, a little bit of yeah. give to it. Uh, definitely a totally different material back here. This. This yeah. is plastic. Yeah, that's right. This is cool. So that's fully, I that almost... said easier to produce to, uh, for sure. Cuts down their production costs in some way. Must be. I wanted to say like this really feels almost like felt back here, if you will. It's got just a tiny bit of give, but underneath, of course, it's still pretty hard. Um, there's a little pull tab right here. Do you see that little string coming down? Oh yeah, the charge port thing. Is that the charge port manual release? Yeah. And then there's also the two um, little drivers in the back under here. This With, is new too. The yeah, little the little covers. I don't think the one that we saw at the IAA had the covers on them. So that's kind of cool to see. And of course, yeah, you, they just go through that material back there. But everything else is looking pretty normal back here. You have your Type 2 Meineke's cable. 
it's all standard for this market bright led lights back here we uh, learned a little bit about the brake lights actually the situation and uh, there's four positions of the lights in the rear bumper the outermost position over here by the way this is a gorgeous diffuser this looks so good back here the outermost one is the secondary brake light so when the trunk is open you know the headlights go up so this turns on the one to the left of that is your turn signal, only your secondary turn signal. When Only if you have your hazards on and the trunk is open, as an example. When the trunk's closed, those are unused. Then you have your reversing light, and then you have your rear fog on the inner position. And that works the same on both sides. If you could close the trunk, we could show the viewers how the secondary brake lights shut off in this case when you close it. And there we go. So that, uh, that makes sense now that this whole brake light is one unit, which I think will improve quality because what was going on with the old ones? Water was getting in them and stuff. And that happened in my Model X. I kind of just gave up and like, couldn't fix, but yeah. you know, just because there's no like split, it doesn't really have that issue with water getting in either side. And it's, you know, one piece is a lot more solid than two. Totally agree. I think this just makes so much more sense to make this one total piece. But I think the car looks great from the back. I actually like this solution of having the lights and the bumpers as well. So no issues here. You can see the bumper fits nicely. Do you have your flashlight on your phone by any chance? If I could steal that really quick, I, I know Colton would kill me if I didn't check this. So we can see a gloss or a uh, metallic level. If I look at the body paint, let's look at the bumper paint. Wow, so similar. That is the closest matched I've ever seen, keeping the light in the same direction here. Closest match I've ever seen on a Tesla. That's cool because, Brandon, as you know, many Teslas have different colored bumpers. Yeah, that's why I wrap them. That's why you wrap them, yeah. Uh, going into this door back here, again, the alignment is really good. Let's just do a quick, nice door thunk. It's amazing. That is like, not quite G-Wagon, but damn, for a Tesla. For Tesla. My Model S, which costs, I don't know, how many of these could you buy for what I paid for my Plaid? That was like 150. Yeah, it's just insane. This is what, like a $40,000 car. Yeah. And it has a door thunk that is, a, you know, a $70,000 door yeah. thunk. Finally, we could not say that about older Teslas at all. Yeah, the doors all feel really nice. You can see the double pane glass up front. Um, we hear the noise performance is much better with the new car than the old car. Is it double pane back here? It's double pane back here. Oh, wow. But this seems like a... Yeah. So the front's definitely a thicker double pane. Yeah, this kind of reminds me of the Model X double pane. Like the front one is super thick, but the rear one is a little bit less thick. Yeah, this definitely doesn't have the same thickness of this acoustic glass that the front windows have. But I think that kind of is okay. Yeah. Because most people are going to be in the front of the car. Let's just look in the rear. Um, in terms of materials, we actually have these new doors. Um, can you explain to us what we think is going on with the door situation? So I'm pretty sure this is kind of just a side, like a side collision improvement. So if you get hit on the side, the door might not crumple in as much, especially if you're getting hit like right here. Yeah. It'll kind of like hook in and stay stuck into the actual part of the door jam instead of going into the seat maybe. Hmm, could be. Yeah, my Polestar 1 has a really long door and has a little fin like that, so... This is only the second time I think I've seen that, but I also, it's not, some Subarus have it. Okay. Well, those aren't always the safest. So, <laughs> um, maybe before we go inside, I, Colton is going to kill me for this video because I'm doing such a bad job of, I don't know what the heck he looks for in build quality things. I just drive the cars. Uh, but the glass roofs fit 100% perfectly and they are 100% perfectly aligned, which is something you just never see from Tesla. That is such a good fit just to show you up front as well. And Brandon, this all seems like the same glass components as the outgoing car, right? Yeah, the front glass and the top, like the front and back glass and the windshield are the same. Yeah, but didn't that uh, didn't they say Tesla added acoustic glass? Yeah. Well, so maybe they added like acoustic layer to the existing, because yeah, the shape is the same. Well, isn't the acoustic glass just the same stuff that was already in the front anyway? Oh, maybe. I don't know. I think they just call it full acoustic glass now because it all it's all over the car let's look at the roof of this model three just as an example this is just a random one again that's parked at our hotel <laughs> oh, the, the the guys who own the car are hitting the fart <laughs> mode on this one yeah i can already see some misalignment here 
on the roof just slightly where it's a little bit higher on the left than the right for sure. And uh, even coming back here, just larger gaps. Yeah, I know. Larger gaps. And yeah, I was checking to see if Century Mode was on as well. <laughs> be like, they'd be like, what the heck are these guys doing to our car? Thankfully, we're not touching it. But um, yeah, this thing is like screwed together. Holy smokes. Really looking good. I guess, since we have the lights on here, what else is there to show? Um, you have your weather stripping that has no ripples in it completely around the door. Perfect weather stripping and of different material than I've felt from other Teslas. Seal. Yeah, it almost feels like a little bit plasticky almost, but like a really nice yeah, high quality on steel. The inside, it's more like there's more of a indent, like right underneath when you reach your fingers under. Yeah, there's um yeah, quite a bit of room underneath this this flap here. That's nice. The material of the seat is maybe you can give your impression of it. Is it it seems different than Model S and X. It seems, yeah, it seems improved. I'm sure the Model S and X will eventually get this kind of material. But yeah, it feels harder wearing than whatever I, I they have like, in those. I do like that not every bit is actually perforated because there's some parts that just don't need to be perforated that are. Yep, I agree. I think this is uh, one of the nicest seat materials because it feels soft. It feels, you know, it feels that uh, I just drove the new BMW i5 and they have this Vaganza interior, which is like a, I think they just tried to make vegan sound fancy. And um, this feels very similar to that. Nice cushion underneath. We have, let's jump in the back, floor mats now for a standard range car. Yeah, this has no options, this car. Just white paint and that's it. Roof headliner fitting, damn, pretty nearly perfect. I don't think I see and any issues. Soft touch now, all the material it, for a while, I guess it was soft touch early on, but then oh cheap, yeah, and now it's there's some again. there's some budge in there. It's no longer that hard. Yeah, my friend had a 2018. He was complaining that his Model Y had didn't have the soft touch on it. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, no, this feels good. This feels a little hollow. There's bits of this car that do feel. Hollow, not these back doors. These back doors feel stuffed. The front doors felt a little hollow. Speaker. Oh yeah. I don't know what that's for. I think it's just like another tweeter. Yeah, it could be like a little surround sound thing. Those tweeters are gone. Maybe they just don't put them in here anymore. Yeah, the, the tweeters up in the A pillar. How about that? Maybe you only get them with the long range? Yeah, because I guess that piece would just be a different shape or something. Yeah, I don't know. What if someone gets else? a dual motor one of these, see if you have a speaker up here right where my finger is pointing. I like this. Kind of cool, but not wide enough. Yeah, but I mean, it's still a little bit better because you could at least fit something in here deeper. Yep, absolutely. The other one, it's like you have to like squeeze your hand in. Yeah, I think this is probably a fair compromise kind based on this. Rivian. Yep, I agree. Very similar to the Rivian. It's like a elastic You have a good material. memory. How do you remember the Rivian seat back pockets? Because I like the Rivians too. Yep, very cool. This is like, uh, so many things are going to get stuck down it's, in it's here. Weird. Like little kids are gonna throw like Cheerios in there. <laughs> Your car's gonna smell like melted chocolate after you dump M&Ms in there or something. That's not a good design. But the quality of everything, like I was just driving a new Mercedes EQS recently and like just touching stuff, like the door pockets and everything, it would just creak like crazy. This feels really tight. There's no noise. That's incredible. You have to like really there's like this guy that goes around on TikTok. Have you seen those videos where he just touches oh, stuff yeah, that no one would yeah. ever touch? Yeah. This would make no noise. We have to do it in the front. We'll do the little test. But even back here, the screen really tight. No rattles out of anything. The one place section, the center console, that's the place that has creaks like crazy. So center console creaks. Yeah. Let's take, let's take a look. We found something wrong with it. Tesla's doomed. Like, you really gotta... <laughs> you gotta yank on that thing. Like, no okay. One. This one feels good. Was this one creaking earlier? No, I was talking about, like, the old center console. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But on the Model X and S, yeah. this always was creaking. But like, yeah, that's got a tiny like, bit, but damn. Yeah, but that, I think that's more just... Even like, this like, whole dashboard? I now, like, it doesn't really make the noise. Dude, this has to be, like... Maybe a little bit right here, but, like... Not... That's, like, a that's, like, initial touch, like... Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can see why they got rid of the whole dashboard piece because it kind of that was the creakiest part right the the piece like the white piece yeah. or the wood piece that went across yeah i don't know how even they said this someone said this is customizable but i don't know how you would even 
I don't want to like break their car. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I totally agree. I'm really surprised with the Creek situation, actually. Yeah. Someone needs to do like Model 3 Highland versus yeah. Model 3 mo like right or here, EQS. Like, I don't know if it's metal or plastic. It's kind of cold, but like. Yeah, I think it's metal. Yeah, I can't. Wow. Like, just a little, just, little bit. Creeks, but like I push it again, it just it doesn't do it. So it's like I'm just like. Like an initial. Yeah, it's yeah. Like I'm just like pushing it, heats it in or something. But all I hear is just like the headliner hitting the top. <laughs> That's amazing. That is really impressive, actually. Especially just, I mean, even the BMW iX that I drove over here, that thing creaks. <laughs> <laughs> wow, these seats feel nice. Good side bolstering here. Great seating position. See what the performance seats look like. You think they'll put different seats in the performance? Oh, it's confirmed. Oh, really? Confirmed? Yeah, nice. there, there was like the parts list that leaked and a lot of stuff got out. I saw the the ludicrous badge yeah, or whatever. I always thought it was gonna apply Model Three, but it's it's a ludicrous. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm excited to see whatever that is. If yeah. they make it slightly spicier, I might get one. Yeah, I mean it's kind of like the Model S, how it has like the black piping or like the white piping on the seats and the plaid. Mm. But you know, in the long range, it's just regular. So this is just the regular one, but the plaid or the ludicrous Model Three. Oh, I didn't know that was the thing. Piping. So, like, my car has the white seats with the black piping. Yeah. You don't get that on the long range? No, like, I'm, I'm my Model X with the white seats. It just had the white. It didn't have anything else. Did not know but that. my friend, he has the plaid. Um, it has, like, the black piping on it. How about that? Pretty cool. Uh, new steering wheel. Nice material here. Feels good. Um, honestly, feels like leather. What would you say this feels like? Regular steering wheel. Does Regular it? steering wheel. Yeah, I mean, I think it feels really high quality. It almost looks like it has a grain texture to it, almost, but I don't really feel it with my hand on there. That's a really nice steering wheel. It's firm, as I like steering wheels to be. It's the right size. This is much nicer than the Model S steering wheel. Way better. I might actually switch my Model S steering is that wheel. Possible? I, I mean, any man made it, man can fix it. Something's right. whatever this saying is. Yeah, I think I might put this one on my Model S. This That's a nice wheel. Right oh, yeah, pulling up the cameras. Because I'm always opening the cameras. And I'm never using this to honk the horn. So Yeah, this is the dumbest place to put a horn. Here, it's there. I think we actually do need to talk about the external speaker situation. Yeah, where's the, where's the card? Where have it? yeah. Okay, let's explain this really quick. So, the there's no horn on this car, as far as we can tell. It just uses the speaker really loudly. <laughs> it's just a little, like the little pedestrian speaker. Doo -doo. Everything on this car is quieter. The reverse noise. Yeah, the reverse noise is really quiet on this one. Hopefully the mics can pick it up. Yeah, so the front pedestrian noise is pretty quiet as well. And then the reverse actually doesn't even do it with the front speaker. It's got another speaker in the back for reverse. Yeah, it's coming seemingly from both sides, but just not annoying, not loud. Can you accelerate backwards? Yeah, so it does the same speed ramp noise change. And then this speaker just turned on as he entered drive up front. So it has... Hear you from here. Oh, really? You can't hear what yeah, I'm saying? It's, it's so muffled. Um, there's uh, reverse speakers are back here. Huh. And the this speaker shuts off when you go in reverse. So that's why it sounds much quieter. But even back here, it's pretty quiet. So they have two speakers now? I think three. It almost sounded like the reverse was on either side. Does that not show up in service mode? Like... No, it didn't show up in service mode. We checked service mode, and there's no differences between the old cars and the new car, as far as we can tell. So I think we can safely tell you that the build quality review of this car is the paint is awesome. The absolute creaks in the interior are like zero. Um, super well put together. The door thunks are epic. I mean, little tiny things like just here, not totally 100% aligned. This is minor. The glass roof pretty perfect. There's still a pretty big gap back here, but that's, I think, actually as designed to have this gap. So I wouldn't say that's a build quality issue. That might just be a design thing. This is probably a little bit bigger than I would like on both sides. I'd like the trunk to sit just slightly closer to the body on these sides, but at least they seem fairly even. 
but honestly, I'm really nitpicking. This has to be, at least in my experience, now I don't see as many Teslas as Colton does, this has to be the nicest put together Tesla I've ever seen. Just looking at the shut lines down the side here, it's dead straight as an arrow. And one of the things I always do is sit in the driver's seat and look in the mirror and I just look at this line right here. And whenever it's not totally perfect, my OCD goes insane and this car is totally aligned. Um, Brandon, you want to share some final thoughts on how this thing's put together from Shanghai? It really just feels like, on, it, it feels like they just got the Model S and then applied all the parts, but like not the actual like shape of it and just put it in the Model 3. Like there's not, you know, the, the door panels have been plastic in the Model 3 for years. Yeah. Like they brought back, it's like not, even, it's not plastic anymore. It's like the leather material. For the Right, this like, yeah, this is now no longer hard touch and it's completely um, has this new felt-ish material on the inside. This is the only part that feels slightly open, but I think there's speakers in here somewhere. No, the, nope, so just the, down the here. The range doesn't have, it has the different door panels, so it would have a speaker here. The wall. Oh, okay, yeah. It's so one of the 17, there's so, only nine on this one. But kind of cool to think this is the cheapest Tesla. And that's what you get. And that's like most of the Teslas people buy in North America are the standard range Model 3 if they're buying a Model 3. Why would you buy a Model S when this exists? Yeah. That's the big question that I have, which is like, holy smokes, this thing is so good. I can't wait to drive it and do all the comparisons and range tests and charging tests. Well, that'll be the same as the existing one, but we have so much to do with this tomorrow. So many videos to make. You're actually filming with it for like three or four days. Two days, okay. So I just have it until the, I don't know, morning tomorrow, and then I got a blast to another event before I head back. But um, yeah, can't thank you guys enough for watching this video. Colton, I hope we did you some sort of justice on this particular one. It's, I don't know, almost two o'clock in the morning right now, I think. And uh, man, we, we went around this car for the last two hours nonstop. We can't find anything blatantly wrong with it. And this, again, not a prepped car, delivered to a customer, Tesla had no idea that we'd be making YouTube videos with it or TikTok videos with it. This is just a standard series production model three Highland and call me impressed. So thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel as Colton is always looking at the quality of many new electric vehicles from many brands, of course, including Tesla. And we'll see you on another one soon. Bye-bye.